Welcome back. Let's talk to Dr. Charlie from Harley. Um, I've got a headline here. Olympic athletes worry about body image. Yeah. High prevalence of depressive qualities amongst male and female gymnasts. So they're all getting depressed. Yeah, it, it doesn't surprise me. I, mean, I think, you know, the thing about uh, uh, elite sports is that a lot of the mental health issues were hidden for a long time. Uh, is that the, right? Didn't yeah, you know if you think about it, well, the cricketers were the start. You know, you've got Triscothic, uh, who wrote a fantastic book, which I've read about his uh, severe depression. So uh, was that really depression, or didn't he have troubles in his private life? Well, possibly In terms both, of marital he had, problems. He, no, he, he undoubtedly had very, very severe depression. Right. And um, when I say hidden, if you remember, there was a tour of Pakistan which he was supposed to do, uh, or he came back from early, and at the time they said it was a, a bacterial disease of the gut because they weren't prepared to say that it was depression. Right. It's only after he revealed that it was depression that the world knew that that's what he suffered from. Freddie Flintoff, the same. Uh, many athletes, and I think there's a, there's a thing we call the athletic triad, which links with the body image thing as well, where a lot of, um, certainly we notice it first in women, they, become, uh, they lose their periods, uh, they become far leaner than they should, i.e. hardly any body fat at all, and some of them are very close to an eating disorder because the level of what they want to eat, the types of food they eat, are very, very controlled to the point that it's almost like an eating disorder. So there are clear issues in the mental health of athletes that I believe up to now have been hidden. Uh, it's good that they're now starting to be revealed. Um, what's behind it, I can't really say, whether it's initial motivation of what made you want to be the athlete, whether it's the fact that you're at times not as successful as you want to be. And in some cases, I think it's the transition from being an elite athlete to ordinary life. Yeah. Because you've done all that training, all that commitment. Or Gascoigne type situation. Absolutely. What do you do? Yeah. You, know, you don't have the same things that kept you going in your professional career. But I would imagine if I was the second or third or maybe the fourth best in the world at something mm. and I couldn't get that number one, <laughs> I would imagine that'd be quite depressing. And, you know, yeah. you're, you're going again, OK, how can I become number Absolutely. one? Absolutely. That, that's a really good point. And, and I, I, you know, I haven't spoken to enough athletes to know what that must uh, feel like. But as you say, it must feel uh, quite uh, demoralising at times. But... Um, they don't all suffer, but certainly some suffer, and I think coaches, trainers, all that support network need to have more awareness about mental health and help them to deal with it a lot earlier than some of them are being dealt with. Because just on that final point, if you're the substitute in the football team week in, week out, okay, what motivates you to, to do everything during the week if you know you're not yeah, going to be picked? Yeah. You know, I, I yeah. would struggle with that. I, I know you would, but I, I think it's like these West End shows, you know, there's, you know, someone goes off sick and then the understudy comes on and they're brilliant and then everyone's like, wow, you know, this is amazing stuff. So I suppose it's always that thought, isn't it? You just hope that the uh, main... Somebody star, hurts themselves. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Break a leg, literally. I, yeah, it's, yeah, absolutely. Leg, literally. Right, final thoughts. Um, anything catch your attention in the press this week? Any things you wanted to uh, run through? I think I'll just know. <laughs> Even better. Dr Charlie from Harley, thank you as always. Thanks, sir.